Hello friends, I hope you are all well. Welcome to the first episode of From Pot to Pickle, a series of back to basics video tutorials for the novice urban vegetable grower. That will take you through the entire growing season from sowing seed right through to the end where we get to preserve our bounty and everything will be grown in pots. In this series, I'm going to show you that no matter how small or limited your outside space, you can still grow a decent amount of veg. And the episodes in this series are going to be really back to basics. So they will be perfect if you are somebody who has perhaps never sown a seed in your life, but they will probably also be useful to those who have tried growing veg before because you can probably still learn something new. My hope is that it really encourages people who perhaps thought that they didn't have suitable outside space or enough knowledge to give growing vegetables from seed a go this year because I reckon we could probably all do with a nice positive project um, to look forward through to look forward to throughout the year. I have been growing vegetables in various outside urban spaces and I counted this up yesterday for about 11 years which is kind of crazy but from balconies to roof terraces to uh, scraps of concrete on a patio and I cannot tell you how much joy the whole process brings me and just how much I look forward to the new growing season uh, every year. And I want to be able to impart some of that to you guys. Now, this first episode is all about planning. So things you need to think about and consider before we launch into the season. And I'm going to do it in a sort of FAQ format. So I've tried to preempt some questions I think might be in the minds of a uh, a newbie urban vegetable grower and I will answer those questions. But before we do those questions, there are two points I want to make. And the first one is, there is no right or wrong way to grow vegetables or to garden in general. So in these episodes, I'm going to be sharing the things that I have found to work for me over the years. Hopefully they will work for you too, but if your intuition or perhaps advice from someone you know tells you maybe to try something a bit different, please feel free to give it a go. You can view my advice more as a guidebook. So kind of telling you which direction to go into, but do not feel like you have to do things exactly the way I'm doing them or at the exact time that I'm doing them. My second point is that things will go wrong. This is part of gardening in general. Um, perhaps your seeds just won't germinate. Young plants can just die for no reason. Uh, perhaps the pollination is not very good. Your flowers don't uh, set to fruit. Your fruit come out weirdly shaped or there will be pests. There will definitely be slugs and snails. You might get foxes or birds or whatever digging things up. Uh, there'll be weather, wind, unexpected frosts, um, all sorts of things. But this is really part and parcel of gardening. I don't think there is a person anywhere in the world, even if they've been gardening for 50 years, that doesn't have some issues every season. It would be strange if you didn't have some issues. I definitely will have problems and I will share them with you guys as and when they happen. But my point is, if and when things don't go quite according to plan, don't beat yourself up about it. Be easy on yourself. Because at the end of the day, don't forget we're working with nature and nature will just do what it wants and who are we to force it to do otherwise? Time for the FAQs. Number one is probably the most common excuses I hear for not giving vegetable growing a go. I do not have the space or the time. There are really two fundamental things you need to be able to grow vegetables from seed from home. You don't need greenhouses, you don't need polytunnels, you don't need any of that. All you need, firstly, is a windowsill inside your house that gets a lot of sun. I will talk more about this indoor growing space in the next tutorial. The second thing you need is some outside space, which also gets a lot of sun. But this outside space can really be tiny. Like even if you only have 
one paving slab size of space outside, as long as it gets good sun, you can fit a pot onto that area and you can grow something. So if you think you don't have enough space, think again. As for time, once you sow the seeds and they germinate and they're growing away, you really don't have to do a lot for the rest of the entire season. The only things you have to do are keep the soil moist um, and then when we're in the height of summer that basically means watering every day and then once the vegetables start to flower and fruit you need to feed it once a week otherwise it just gets on with itself. If you think you might not have enough space, uh, enough time, my recommendation would be still grow something, it's so worth it, but maybe keep the number of pots, plants, vegetables that you're growing to a minimum, maybe just one, two or three. Three different pots, each with a different vegetable in, maybe one pot with tomatoes, one with cucumbers, one with aubergines, or just three of the same. And the amount of joy growing those three plants will give you will far outweigh any time that you need to put into it, which in my opinion is really very minimal anyway. Okay, another question. What's the actual plan? What are we going to be doing this year? In a nutshell, this is our plan for the next few months. We will be sowing our vegetable seeds of choice in small pots inside our houses. Once they're germinated and growing, they will live on our sunny windowsills inside our home for several weeks. When the weather starts to get a little bit warmer, and this is usually around April time, we will start a process called hardening off. That is when we take all those young plants outside during the day so they can soak up all the nice sun, but we still bring them inside every night because the temperatures will still be too low for them to tolerate. This hardening off period lasts for, it can vary, but maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks. Then later on, when it gets nice and warm, so when the nighttime temperatures are also warm enough for the plants, the plants will stay out permanently. This happens around, in the UK, about mid to late May. From then on, the plants will begin to start producing their fruits and we will start to harvest those fruits and they will continue to do so until the end of the season, which basically means until we get to a point of the year where the weather gets too cold and the light levels start reducing and they, the plants no longer are able to produce fruit or ripen them. In London and, the, and kind of the UK, that can be up to about the end of September. If you live in a warmer place, you'll be harvesting your fruit for longer, probably into maybe October and November. So that, in a nutshell, is the plan. What veg should I grow? The best advice I ever heard about what vegetables to grow is grow what you like to eat. If space is at a premium, as is generally the case with urban growers, it makes sense to only use that space for your favourite vegetables. For example, I'm not the biggest fan of courgettes, like I like them, but not enough to actually grow them, so I don't grow them. I love tomatoes, but I'm not the biggest fan of cherry tomatoes, so I don't grow cherry tomatoes. So think about what you like to eat, and you've got a short list. When space is at a premium, you want vegetables that are going to offer you the biggest harvests. And I have found that it's the vegetables that flower and that flower gets pollinated and sets to fruit that are the most prolific and you get the most harvest from. These include things like tomatoes, chilies, peppers, peas, beans, aubergines, cucumbers, squash, courgettes, summer squash. There might be some more I've forgotten. So that group of vegetables are perfect for growing in pots and they will give you a lot of harvest. Vegetables I tend to avoid growing in pots, firstly include root vegetables. These are things like radishes, beetroots, turnips, parsnips, carrots. 
Not because they can't grow in pots, absolutely they can. There are some varieties that are very well suited for pots. But for me, they just don't produce enough of a harvest. You sow your carrot seeds, the carrots might take two to three months before they're ready to pull up. And I pull them up, but I've only got maybe like six carrots from a pot. Whereas if I had a tomato plant in there, it would have just continued flowering and fruiting and I would have got way more harvest from that. So I tend to avoid root veg. But if you are the biggest fan of beetroot in the world and you want to grow beetroot, please grow the beetroot. Remember, you don't have to do exactly what I am doing. Another group of vegetables I tend to steer away from are the brassicas. So these are things like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale. Firstly, because these are generally big plants and they are best suited for where you have actual ground to plant them in, a vegetable bed or an allotment or just some big amount of soil. But also for the same reason as the root veg in that they take many weeks and months to grow you harvest one head and that's kind of all you get from that space from the season again if you want to prove me wrong please do and try and grow any of those in a pot i have grown kale in a pot before and it was fine just wasn't as rewarding as the flowering vegetable plants what growing habit or form should you be looking out for there is a lot of information available on the packets of seeds and when you're browsing which seeds to purchase, read that information and it will tell you how the plant is expected to grow. And for pots, lots of different forms of habits are suitable. For example, if you find seeds that say they are bush or dwarf plants, they are perfect for pots. It means that they stay low, bushy and compact. You can see here, these are some French beans. The variety is called Safari, but the description is telling me that it is a dwarf plant. When it comes to tomatoes and also cucumbers, you can get cordon or vine varieties. These are the ones that go really quite tall, like eight, nine, 10 feet. They'll continue growing throughout the season if you let them. They have one main stem and then the fruits are formed off of that main stem. These I have found are great for growing in pots. Don't let the height put you off. I've had the most success with veg with cordon vine tomatoes. All you will need to ensure is that you purchase something that is strong enough to support those vines. And for me, usually that's bamboo canes. If the tomatoes you're choosing to grow as a vine are particularly big, such as the big beefsteak ones, my favorite, um, your support really does need to be quite strong because those, those tomatoes get heavy and they will kind of um, need as much support as you can give them. So cordon and vine also suit pots. Everything else, so sort of chilies, aubergines, courgettes, um, they tend to get quite big, but not particularly tall. For example, the aubergines I grew last year got to about four or five feet. They were quite bushy. They were, they were quite tall. I just put a bamboo cane in the pot uh, to give them a little bit of support and they were very happy. Chilies as well, some of them can get quite tall. Um, but not so much that they need staking, for example. Another habit or form of a plant to look out for is a cascading habit. So this is where the plant grows and kind of cascades over the side of the pot, which can look very lovely. And a classic for that is a type of cherry tomato called Tumbling Tom. As the name suggests, it tumbles over the side, looks great, works both in a pot and in a hanging basket. So in summary, look for dwarf or bush types. Also look for tall cordon or vine types, as long as you can support them. And then also cascading types, and then everything else, as long as you can stick a bamboo in the pot, they should be fine. How many plants should I grow? So to give you some context, last year, 2020, I grew four tomato plants. They were all the cordon vine types and they were all beefsteak tomatoes. And for, from just those four plants in four pots, 
I harvested over 21 kilograms of tomatoes, so that's 46 pounds. There were a lot of tomatoes. With my aubergines, I had three aubergine plants, and from them I harvested over six kilograms of aubergines. It was 11 aubergines in total. I would have harvested a lot more, but I sowed my seeds a little bit late. But that gives you some context as to how much fruit you can expect from your plants. Point to note, my plants grew very strongly because both my inside growing space, my windowsill, and my outside growing space, my little bit of patio, are south facing. So my plants got all the sun they wanted, which meant they grew strong, which means maximum fruit production. If you're growing your plants at a slightly different aspect, maybe east facing or west facing, you will still get good amount of harvest, but perhaps not as much as plants that are in a south facing spot. You really only have two limitations when it comes to how many pots of vegetables can I have. The first is that windowsill area. You're limited by how many small plants you can fit there, because remember they stay there for the first few weeks. And then you're limited only by your outside space. So physically, how many pots of about this diameter, about 40 centimetres, can you fit in your sunniest corner? They're really your two main limitations. How long will it be before I start to harvest? Different vegetables grow at different rates. The slowest of them all are the chilies, aubergines, and the sweet peppers. This is why we start them off early. This is why these are the first seeds I sow of the season. The next slowest growing are tomatoes. And then after that kind of comes everything else. Things like the cucumbers, the squash, the courgettes, they are much faster to uh, get to the harvesting stage. To give you some context, last year I sowed my tomato seeds on the 1st of February and I harvested my first tomato at the end of June. That is almost five months between seed sowing and the first harvest. The aubergines and chilies were around the same amount of time. Don't let that length of time put you off. The harvesting of the fruit is like the final piece of joy over months of joy. So much happens before that point uh, that will keep you entertained daily. You'll see your plants grow, they will start to form flowers, you'll witness the flowers being pollinating, you will witness the fruit starting to swell, get bigger, then they'll start to take on colour and then the very last piece of the puzzle is when they're ripe enough to pick. Growing vegetables is a lesson in patience and also enjoying the journey as well as the destination. I'm not in the UK, can I still take part? Absolutely you can. If you live in a part of the world that has a temperate climate, then you will also be able to grow these types of veg in the same way that I'm growing them. If where you live is warmer than the UK, lucky you, all that means is that your veg will probably grow stronger and better than the ones we grow in the UK because you will have uh, warmer days sooner, you will have more hours of sunshine and the warmth will stay later on in the year. So it'll probably mean you'll be harvesting well into October and November still. Everything else remains exactly the same and you can still certainly join in. What type of seed should I get? Hybrid and F1 types or heirloom and heritage types? Vegetable seeds fall into two main categories, hybrid types and non-hybrid types. The way you can tell if a packet of seeds is a hybrid is it will either say the word hybrid or it will say F1 somewhere. So for example here you can see this variety of cucumber is called Isnik and the F1 tells me that it's a hybrid seed. Same here. This variety of aubergine is called Bonica and the F1 tells me it's a hybrid. Whereas this cucumber is called Diva and because it doesn't mention F1 or hybrid anywhere, it's not a hybrid. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the differences between the two, but the main point is if you intend to try to save seed from this year's fruit in order to sow next season, so in 2022, you need to purchase seeds that are not hybrid. So ones that don't mention 
hybrid or F1 anywhere. These can also be referred to as heirloom or heritage types. Don't get too hung up about on the type of seeds you're buying, just buy some seeds. Where can I buy seeds from? Lots of places. There are many online retailers you can purchase seeds from. Uh, in the UK, I have previously purchased from Thompson & Morgan, Crocus, and this year I got all my seeds from Real Seeds. You can also check out websites like Amazon and eBay who often have seed sellers on them. Check local uh, big supermarkets. They often have like a little gardening area and will have some seeds. Also, of course, your local garden centre, but also ask friends and family who have grown veg before. If they grew veg last year, they may well have saved their seed and they may have some excess that they are willing to share with you. When should I start sowing my seeds? Different veg can be sown at different times of year and every packet of seeds on the back will have a suggested window for sowing. This window is usually about two to three months long. And personally, I tend to sow my seeds at the very early end of those windows because it means that I will start harvesting fruit earlier. There is a con to sowing this early though. It does mean that your windowsill plants end up getting quite big before they can live outside permanently. Um, and so you have these rather big plants kind of taking over your windowsill area and maybe quite a bit of your room. I find this quite a minor inconvenience compared to the fact that I'm going to be harvesting much earlier and I think it's worth it. But don't worry if you haven't sown your seeds as early as I have, it's absolutely fine. You can sow them a little bit later, it'll just mean that your fruit come a little bit later. One point to note for the very slow growing vegetables, so that's the chilies, the sweet peppers and the aubergines, you really do have to start them early just because they take so long to grow. That is why they're going to be the first seeds that we sow. I'm sowing mine in the middle of January. Um, I would try to sow them by the end of January if you can. And that is it, folks, the end of the first episode of From Pot to Pickle. I promise you future ones will not be this long. It's just that this was the introductory one. If you made it to the end, congratulations. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, please write them in a comment below and I will respond to them. If you like the tutorial, please like it and let me know also in a comment and feel free to share it with friends and family who you think might find it useful. In our next tutorial, that's going to be about prep. I'm going to take you through all the things you will need to sow your first seeds. Until then.